Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. It's getting towards the end of July and it's time for another garden tour. So let's take a walk around to the garden and I'll give you an update on how everything's doing. Now it seems like, you know, mid to late July, maybe early August is really the peak of garden season, which is a great thing. The problem with that is that once you've gotten to the peak of the garden, that's when the inevitable decline really starts to happen. And while we are harvesting lots of great vegetables right now, we are also seeing signs of that decline starting. So let's take a look around the garden and I will show you how everything's doing. Over here, you can see the cherry tomato patch. We've been getting a handful of ripe cherry tomatoes every day. So they've been delicious. But you can also see signs of disease. Now I've been clipping off the lower leaves from my tomato plants. You can see they're all kind of bare on the bottom. I usually start doing that pretty early in the season to increase airflow. But once you start seeing signs of disease, it's important to do that even more. So pruning off the lower leaves of your tomato plants should slow down the spread of the disease and keep your plants healthy as long as possible so that you can get as much of a harvest as possible before they eventually do succumb. You can see back there, I've got some delicious looking sun golds. Those are beautiful. So I really do need to stay on top of pruning a little bit more. I want to keep my tomato plants healthy as long as possible. They will eventually succumb to disease. That's kind of inevitable. Um, this past week has been really hot and humid and that's the perfect breeding grounds for disease. You'll see that some of my tomatoes are starting to struggle. I have some other plants that are starting to show a little bit of struggle against the heat as well, but we are still getting a great harvest right now. And so the goal is to keep that harvest going as long as possible. Over here, you can see I have a couple more tomato plants. These are the tomatoes that we bagged together so that we can hopefully save seeds from them. You can see that at least this one was pollinated and that should have prevented cross-pollination. Up here, I've got another cluster. These are my Sun Gold Select tomatoes, which as I've mentioned before, is the open pollinated version of Sun Gold. So I'm hoping that these will give us some good seeds that we can save to grow this variety again and again. Over here, I have my, what was my one original determinate tomato, sauce tomato. Let's see, I know there's some tomatoes back in there. Let's see if we can really get a look at them. So there you can see no signs of ripeness yet, but this is a determinate tomato. So this is going to ripen all of its crop at once. So it's just going to take its time setting fruit. You can see there is some more smaller tomatoes up here. It's just gonna continue setting fruit and then it should ripen those all pretty much at once. Over here, you can see, I've got some kale in this bed, some cabbage. Remember, these were the cabbages that were pretty much getting destroyed by cabbage worms. You can see the outer leaves have been pretty ravaged. But once we sprayed BT on them, that really took care of the problem and now it's getting a nice little cabbage head. This one still has a little ways to go, but it's definitely on its way. And back here, you can see these beans are showing a little bit of struggle against the heat too. These are my Tanya's pink pod beans. These are these beautiful hot pink beans and these are being grown exclusively for seed. So if I was going to be harvesting them for beans, I would harvest this, but I'm growing these for seed. So I'm just going to let these go until they are completely developed and dried out. And then we're going to save seeds from those. Now in this same bed here, this is my kale cauliflower cabbage bed. You can see that the cauliflower is gone. This bare spot is where the cauliflower used to be. We've harvested all of that. I pulled out the plants because cauliflower is pretty much a one and done type of plant. I did succession sow some zucchini seeds in here, but it doesn't look like they've come up yet. That was only a couple days ago, so I can't really have expected them to come up. But you can see the kale is looking, looking pretty good. We've harvested quite a bit of kale. You can see the kale is missing a lot of its lower leaves as well. So I've been harvesting those and should still keep going strong for a little bit. I've got one cabbage here. This one is ready to harvest. So this may become part of tonight's dinner. I've got a little mini Savoy cabbage here that's just kind of starting to get its head. I'm not sure if this one's gonna get all that big because this one's kind of been shaded out by some of the bigger plants. So that might just be a mini head of cabbage. Now as far as succession sowing, I mentioned that I had pulled out all my cauliflower because it had yielded its head and now that plant is done. So there's really no point in keeping it growing in the garden any longer. So what I did was I ripped those plants out 
And now I can use that same space to grow something else that will yield for me. Because it is getting close to the end of July, I don't have a really long amount of time left. So I seeded a couple really fast growing zucchinis there, something that should give me a nice fall harvest, but be able to yield its crop before fall. Because zucchini is frost tender and that will die when the freezes come. But you'll kind of see throughout the garden today, I'll be showing you some different things that we're succession sowing. That's kind of the theme of this time of year is to be pulling out plants that aren't really performing anymore and just kind of replacing them with new plants so that we can still make the most of that space and the time that we have left in this growing season. Now, speaking of succession sowing, here you can see my fall crop of tomatoes. We just transplanted these seedlings together a few days ago. I'm going to link that video below. I talk in a little more detail in that video about how and why we are growing these plants for fall. But you can see it's only been a couple days. And if you saw that video, you can see that these plants are already starting to grow. Something about tomato plants, they just love to get their roots in the ground. Once they're able to sink their roots into that soil, they just take off. So these are our fall tomato plants. I need to get out here and mulch these with straw to really keep them protected from weeds and keep the moisture in, especially with this heat wave we're having. But as for right now, I'm really happy with how they're looking. Now behind me, you can see a lot of my summer tomato plants. These are mostly big heirloom slicers, kind of. I have a pretty big variety of varieties, big variety of varieties growing here. We still have not harvested a single large slicer tomato. We're gonna look around the garden today and hopefully we can find a tomato or two that is starting to blush and that will mean that the harvest is coming soon. But let's take a closer look at some of these tomato plants. Now you can see I haven't been as diligent about tying these up as I should have. This plant here actually had partly fallen down. You can see I have it tied here. We got a storm the other day and it flopped over where I had tied it. As you can see, it had all this growth up here that hadn't been tied yet. So I came out and retied it. It's still kind of adjusting, but I think it'll be okay. But these tomato plants down here, you can see they're starting to show signs of disease too. I've been pruning off the lower leaves, as I mentioned, and that definitely helps. It helps slow the onset of disease, and once you have disease, it also helps slow the spread. So we do have disease here, so the main goal at this point is going to be controlling it so that we're able to harvest these tomatoes. You can see we have a lot of big green tomatoes here. We want to be able to harvest those before these plants stop producing. So let's take a look at these. These are Dr. Weish's, Dr. Wishy's. I'm not sure how you say that. Every time I do a video mentioning this plant, I have to say that I'm not sure how to pronounce the name because I still don't know. But that's getting a handful of tomatoes. This is a big kind of golden orange heirloom. And this is my first year growing it. I've heard that it's delicious. So hopefully you can see this branch here. It's kind of struggling to support the weight of that tomato. So hopefully it holds up. Um, over here, the next plant over is an Abe Lincoln. And I will say I've never grown Abe Lincoln before. I've heard amazing things about it. It's supposed to be delicious. But out of all the plants in my garden, I've noticed that the Abe Lincolns seem to have the most advanced disease progression on them. So I'm going to have to see, even if it's delicious, if it doesn't stay healthy, then it's not going to be worth growing for me next year. Got some little blooms here. So let's see. You can see I've got this kale has seeds that are ready to harvest. We came through the garden the other day and did a mini tour and harvested some kale seeds together. So it looks like it's time to harvest a few more. I'm gonna link that video below in case you missed it. And then I've got over here, um, these I think are more of the Tanya's pink pod beans here. I planted a few of those through here. You can see the beans are kind of struggling a little bit too, but they're still gonna yield. These are the ones that we're saving seed from. Got a baby butternut squash. I just transplanted this out here. Actually, no, I direct seeded this one. I transplanted a different one. Hopefully we'll get a yield from this before we get frost. Here's another butternut squash and another one that's a little farther along. This is a really fast maturing variety of butternut squash. It's supposed to be only 75 days to maturity. So I decided to take a risk and plant these. I should get a pretty good harvest from these, but we'll find out. Now here are the cucumbers that we transplanted a little bit late in the season. So my cucumbers are delayed, but as you can see, we're starting to have hints, starting to have tiny hints of fruit getting ready. I don't know which plants these are because the seedlings all got mixed up, but once they start getting fruits, I should be able to tell pretty quickly because they looked pretty distinct from each other. So these are really probably at least a month behind where they really should be. 
but they're looking pretty healthy still. That's kind of the benefit of succession sowing. These plants, while they're behind, aren't struggling the way some of my other plants are that have been out here longer. So we'll see, hopefully we're still able to get a good cucumber harvest this year. Got a couple more cucumbers here. This one's actually a melon. I'm not sure which type of melon it is. I have two types that I planted this year, but we'll find out when it gives us some fruit. All right, let's take a look at the zucchinis here. If you saw my last garden tour, you know that we talked quite a bit about the silvering on the leaves. I'm still not seeing any signs of mildew. This is still natural color variation. So that's a good thing. We'll keep an eye out for powdery mildew though, when we see that. Let me see, it looks like we have a zucchini down there and some more female flowers. There's one open right here. So hopefully that will get pollinated. We should get some more zucchinis from this really soon. So the other day I did find some squash beetle eggs on the undersides of my zucchini leaves. So that's something you wanna check for. It's like a cluster of little coppery eggs. I'm gonna post a picture up on the screen here. So I just, once I found the first cluster, I went through and just squashed all the eggs I could find. And that should hopefully keep the plants safe. I had seen a couple of the adult squash beetles. They sort of look like big orange ladybugs. So that's why I'm pretty sure those were squash beetle eggs. And the adults, I didn't really do anything to control them because they hadn't been doing any significant damage. But if I had allowed the eggs to hatch, the larvae certainly would have done damage. So I squashed all those eggs before they had a chance to hatch. And just to note, I did find a patch on one of my cucumbers as well. So check your cucumber plants for them too. All right, on our way to look at the other zucchinis, let's stop and take a look at the cucumbers on this trellis here. These here look kind of light colored. I'm guessing that these are my silver slicer cucumbers. So those should turn white and I've heard that those are delicious. So hopefully those yield well. Down here, this is kind of weird looking cucumber. I'm thinking that's a China Jade cucumber and it's looking a little strange right now, but I'm hoping that it will kind of even out its shape a little bit and that should be delicious too. All right, so let's go through here and look at our other zucchini plants. So you can see here, I have a zucchini I need to harvest. This plant's kind of growing right up against the trellis. And then down in here, this is a gray zucchini. Got another one of those I have to harvest too. So we've got to come out here and do some harvesting. Here are my bush beans. These are the red swan. You can see most of the beans are gone. We've been harvesting those quite a bit actually. They're still making a few beans, but these beans are kind of nearing the end of their productive life. Bush beans yield really fast, but they don't yield for a really long time. And so this is a great plant to always be succession sowing. So you can see a lot of these beans here are kind of starting to die down a little bit. So I've transplanted a couple sugar pumpkin plants over here. This is again, if you've been around a while, you know that half of the gardening I do is an experiment. This is yet another experiment. We're going to see if we have enough time to get these to yield. This is a hundred days to maturity variety and I may not have a hundred days till my frost date, but as you can see, these seedlings are already several weeks old. So that gives us a little bit of a head start. So we're going to give this a shot. We'll see what happens. And you can see there are a few of the red swan beans that decided to become a pole bean and grow up the trellis and up my tomato plants. So we still have a few more of those that we're going to get, but we're definitely on the downward trend when it comes to those. Now here's a better look at these red swan beans. They're really pretty, especially mingled with these. These are Castelludo Genovese tomatoes and aren't they kind of crazy, gnarly looking tomatoes? These are um, a deep red tomato that's fluted as you can see. So I'm looking forward to getting some of these. I grew them last year and they were really good and they were really pretty. So hopefully we'll get a good harvest of those this year. So got some more bush beans down here. These are ones that I succession sowed. I sowed a little bit later. So you can see these are just starting to get their beans. Bush beans are a great plant to succession sow because they yield so fast and they don't take up a lot of space. So you can kind of, for the most part, they don't take up a lot of space, I should say. So you can kind of fit them in between other plants. So those are a great plant to kind of stick in here and there. And then over here, there's my zucchinis again, which we saw. You can see I've got a little cucumber there, almost ready to harvest. It's a little misshapen, probably because of the heat, but looks like it's doing well anyway. Now over here is another tomato bed. Before we get to the tomatoes, let's like take a look at this lettuce. This lettuce is really vigorously going to seed. This lettuce is going to spread a lot of its offspring all over this garden, and that is a great thing. I did come out and collect a lot of the seeds. 
we did a little harvest tour a few days ago and we collected a lot of lettuce seeds. This is a great plant and so I'm happy to have it spread throughout the garden. But I think I might come out and harvest a few more of these seeds and then let the rest of them just kind of spread where they want to. So these tomatoes, as you can see, they're very tall. They're taller than me at this point, taller than the trellis. And at least the top of the plant looks really healthy. So we did install these trellises together back in the spring. And I mentioned this is kind of an alternative to a cattle panel because we don't have a truck. And so it's kind of tricky to get a cattle panel home to your house without a truck. So we use this welded wire fencing as an alternative. And I did say that I was going to update you about how we like it. And so far it's been doing great. I mean, you can see our tomato plants are huge. They've got lots of tomatoes on them and this fencing is holding up really well. So this is a great alternative to cattle panels for those people who don't have a truck and don't have a way to get them home. So let's take a look at some of these tomato plants. As we go through and look a little more closely, you will see there are some signs of disease on these plants. So that's part of the decline that we talked about. But you can see we've got some great tomatoes too. There's a really good example of a Castelludo Genovese. See how fluted that is? And as you can hear in the background, it sounds like we've got another egg to harvest. My chickens are off to a good start this morning. Got some great tomatoes here. These are my Black Beauty tomatoes and look at that deep purple color. I have never grown this variety before and I'm so excited to try them. We've still got a ways to go for them to ripen. You can see the bottoms of the tomatoes are still green. Once those turn dark red on the bottom, we know, then we'll know that they're ready. But for now, I'm excited that we're gonna get those soon. This plant in here is a Horizon tomato, which I've never grown before. I've actually never even heard of before, but one of the seed companies I ordered from sent me these seeds as a free sample. We haven't harvested any tomatoes yet, so I can't say anything about the flavor. But I will say that it seems to be a really productive plant. See all these tomatoes here? Still from the same plant. So that's like a medium-sized red tomato. Once we harvest some of those, I'll give you more of an update about how I like the flavor. I mentioned in my last, in the other tomato trellis, the Abe Lincoln seemed to be very disease prone in my area. This is my other Abe Lincoln plant. I mean, you can see this has a lot more leaves stripped off the bottom than most of my other plants. And here it's still getting more disease. I'm not sure if I'll be growing this variety again. Um, I'm gonna have to wait and try the tomatoes, but even if the tomatoes are delicious, I don't know if it's worth growing a variety that is so disease prone in my area. So jury's still out on that one. And over here is my favorite, Cherokee Purple. And I think, tell me what you think. Is this tomato right here just barely starting to blush? Looks like it's becoming slightly more yellowy and actually maybe this one too. So that might be the first signs of ripening starting. Hopefully, these are my favorite tomatoes. Okay, so we're standing under the bean trellis now. As you can see, the beans have filled out really nicely. We're starting to get some beans here. We've been actually harvesting beans for a while now, and we've been getting quite a few. They're very delicious. These beans are for the most part still growing strong, but you can see they are struggling a little bit. There's some yellowing on the leaves. I am not 100% sure the cause, but I'm kind of attributing this to the heat wave that we have going on. It's been, I know this is gonna be nothing to those of you in the South, but in Connecticut, it's not usually that hot here. And we've had, I think, five days in a row over 90, a couple days close to 100. And there's a couple more days to go. So I'm hoping my garden will hold up okay. Over on this side of the trellis are my rattlesnake pole beans. Those are a little bit behind the other ones because they're a later maturing variety. I re a lot of these seeds because I had some sparse germination. So you can see I have a lot of smaller plants that have come up more recently. So that's actually a good thing because that will stagger our harvest a little bit and give us beans for a longer season. So that may end up actually turning out for the best. Okay, so here's the back of my big tomato trellis. You can see we have a couple more cherry tomato plants back here that are doing pretty well. I've got some more bush beans in here. Bush beans are one of my favorite things to, to succession sow if you haven't figured that out already. I kind of stick them wherever I have spots where I pull something out. And over here, I've got quite a few peppers. My peppers are doing okay. Um, I think I've gotten a little spoiled growing peppers in pots on my deck because they just do so much better in pots. So we don't have a lot of peppers yet, although the plants look healthy. Not as big as I would like, but healthy. So we're gonna see what happens with those. Here's one I'm trying to save seeds from. This is the lunchbox pepper mix, which is like a really small, a few inches long little snacking pepper. They come in red, orange, and yellow. And my seeds came as a mix. So I'm trying to save seeds from each individual color. 
So I have no idea what color this is. We're just going to save seeds from whichever color this is. And hopefully we can get all three. You can see that I've taken most of my lettuce out. The lettuce was really struggling in the heat and it was time to kind of let it go. You can see I've got some bush beans just coming up here. I just started those. I planted a couple of zucchini seeds over here too. They haven't come up yet, but those should be coming up soon and give us give us still some harvest out of this space. We want to make the best use of the space we can, especially when you have a small garden. Um, kind of packing things in where you can fit them and succession sowing are really your best friends when it comes to maximizing your harvest. Over here, our broccoli is mostly done. I've harvested all the main heads. We are still getting some side shoots, as you can see here. These need another couple days and they'll be ready to harvest. Got some tiny little side shoots developing in here. So I'm going to keep these broccolis going until I need this space. You can see I have a few little lettuce plants that I kind of sneaked in. The shade from the broccoli helps them withstand the heat a little bit longer. So we don't get a lot of lettuce from that, but it's enough to stick a couple leaves on a, on a sandwich or something. Over here, a couple more broccoli heads. Now you can see I'm not even really bothering covering this with insect netting anymore. This broccoli is kind of on the way out anyway. And so if I have to pull it a little bit early, that will be okay. Over here, I've got more peppers with, of course, bush beans sprinkled in. Down here, I've got a few red swans. These are ready to harvest, looking nice and beautiful and purple. I've got a few jalapenos in here. I've really just got to get back to growing my peppers on the deck. I have a few on my deck growing now. I'll show you for comparison. You can see they're doing much better. Okay, so here's a little update on my mystery plant that I think is a ground cherry. I'm thinking even more that it's a ground cherry now. These look like little ground cherry fruits. And then that looks like a ground cherry flower to me. But I'm definitely going to ask some experts before actually eating this because I'm not 100% sure. I did scatter ground cherry seeds in my garden and so I'm guessing this is one of them. It just kind of took it like a couple months to germinate, which is why I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking it's a ground cherry. So my stargazer lilies are just about to open. I can't wait to see these. These are, lilies are probably my favorite flower and they smell so sweet too. So these will be beautiful when they open. I'm definitely gonna have to do a garden tour while they're open to make sure that you guys get to see them too. The raspberry patch is looking great. We have been getting so many raspberries from this. We get a full bowl every day for the past probably week and a half. We've been getting nice big bowls of raspberries. The summer harvest is starting to slow down a little bit. There's still plenty to go, but I can tell we're kind of starting to come to the end of it. But the beautiful thing about this raspberry variety is that this variety yields twice. So we're going to get a second harvest this fall. So basically the deal with the deal with, I think they're called everbearing raspberries. They'll send up the cane. This is a new cane that just came up this year. This cane will yield this fall. And then this cane will yield again next summer and then it will die. So all these canes that have berries on them now were last summer's canes. This is their final yield and then they're going to die. And so once these are done fruiting, I'm going to go in and prune all of these canes out. And then these canes here, I'm going to trim down a little bit, but leave them because they will give us a second harvest next summer. So here's a quick little update on this no dig garden bed that I just put in this year. I didn't really do this in the most ideal way. And so I'm not hopeful for a really big harvest, but hopefully we'll get a little bit to make it worth doing. Basically the ideal way to do a no dig garden bed, you can see that I have bits of cardboard on the edge. I laid down cardboard and then covered it with a thick layer of compost. Ideally, what you want to do is if you're planning to plant in the spring, you want to do that in the fall before so that it kills the weeds and the grass underneath and then kind of, oh, hello, Milo. Milo wants to say hi. Hi, Milo. So you want to ideally do this the fall before, several months before you'll, before you'll be planting. That gives it time to kind of smother the grass and the weeds underneath, but still decompose enough that your plants will be able to just to really sink their roots through the cardboard and into the soil. Because I did this, I basically put the cardboard down and then the compost and then immediately planted on it. Um, it's a little bit trickier for my plants to sink their roots in. So I've been extra careful about making sure it's well watered. You can see a little bit of the cardboard sticking out on the edge here. Some of this compost got washed away, but I've been really careful about keeping it well watered because plants won't be able, oh my goodness, Milo. Milo just really wants some love right now. 
These plants will not be able to sink their roots through the cardboard if it stays dry. So we really need to make sure that it stays wet. So I have been watering this pretty much every day that it doesn't rain, unless it's a cooler day. And here I've got some beans starting to climb. These butternut squashes are the ones I'm the least hopeful for. They don't seem to be doing a whole lot. But we'll keep an eye on it and hopefully we'll get a harvest. And if not, this area will be prepped to try again next year. Now my cucumbers over here are actually doing really well. I think they look better than the ones in my garden. So I'm wondering if the fact that my cucumber seedlings in the garden weren't doing well is kind of a blessing in disguise because I would never have planted cucumbers over here. Basically, I started extra seedlings. These are my extras and I just had to find something to do with them. So I planted them along this chain link fence, but look at how good they are doing. So I'm thinking that may be something that might turn out to actually be for the best. This one looks like a silver slicer. I'm not sure what that one is. Maybe a China Jade because it's kind of long. Yeah, it's definitely a China Jade because you can see another one of the fruits down here. It's long and skinny. Now, typically in the past, I've never been very successful at container gardening, but this year looks like it's shaping up to be the exception. You can see I've got a couple cucumber plants here. And here I've got a little basil that just got started, a butternut squash. And here's my big pot, which has pineapple sage. This has bush beans. These are the golden yellow beans. So those are looking really good. Those are delicious. We've harvested those. We've harvested a bunch of those and they've been good. Got some nasturtiums. Over here, I've got a couple sugar pie pumpkins growing in this pot here. And we'll see how these do. I'm not sure if these are the ideal plant for container growing, but we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. Over here, you can see how these pepper plants look so much nicer than the ones down in my garden. And these giant cayenne peppers are starting to turn red. This guy, it's almost touching the soil. That's a big pepper. So we should be harvesting some of those soon. Over here, I've got a jalapeno with a nasturtium friend growing in there. Sweet potatoes. This one has an interesting fused leaf. This is like two sweet potato leaves that grew as one. So that's kind of interesting. Got some other green beans through here. Got some onions. You can see they're starting to bulb up, but I'm not hopeful that they're going to be all that large. Some more cucumbers. See, they're trying to cling to my other plants and grow. Here is my one and only Paul Robeson tomato, which is looking really good. I've never really had that great luck with tomatoes in pots, but this one seems to be doing well. So you can see in here, I bagged up some blossoms, so we should be able to save seeds from that. Here's part of my backup tomato plan. You can see I've got four suckers, two in each jar. These were healthy suckers pruned from my plants. And it looks like they're just starting to get roots. So that's a good sign. So once these get roots, I'm going to be transplanting them into pots on my deck. Then if they don't yield quite by frost, I can bring them into the house and hopefully they'll finish ripening in there. So these should give us some fall tomatoes. That's the hope anyway, we'll see what happens. So Bye. here you can see another angle of the Paul Robeson. You can see it's got a few tomatoes on it, plus the little bag of pollinated blooms that should hopefully give us some seeds we can save. Down here, these are China Jade cucumbers. This is my kind of succession sowing of cucumbers. So we should hopefully get some good fall cucumbers from those. And in here, this pot is full of sweet potatoes. This is lamb's quarter. I think I mentioned this on my last garden tour. This is an edible weed. It's delicious. It kind of tastes like spinach. If you're not a big fan of eating that, it's great for chickens and rabbits. And you can saute it up just like spinach, put it in soup, eat it plain, whatever. It's good and delicious. It's kind of good to know what kind of edible plants there are in your area. Definitely make sure that you're 100% sure of your ID before eating a wild plant. But this is a good one to start with because it's pretty easy to identify and it grows pretty much everywhere. So I've got a pot here. This is kind of started off as a tomato jungle. Now it's kind of merged into an everything jungle. So it's kind of, I mean, you can see my cucumber trailing all the way over here. Here's my little spicy bush basil, which is doing really well. But through here, I've got cherry tomatoes in that pot. Back there, I don't know if you can really tell where any of them end and the other begins, but I've got a couple more jalapeno plants. I've got some bush beans kind of mixed in as companion plants. I've got the cucumber that you saw coming out and there's another cucumber that is trailing over the edge of the deck there. So we've got those as well. Here's some purple ball basil, more onions here. So you can see they're bulbing up, but probably not going to be that large. 
Well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Here I've got some butternut squash. These again, these are bush butternut squash, not vining types. So these should stay pretty compact. So I can also bring these into my house if I need to, to get them to finish ripening before frost. Basil, more basil, rosemary, marigolds and basil. My son's clementine. Not much has changed there, but it's still looking beautiful. And here is my huge roselle plant, which hasn't shown signs of flowering at all yet. So I'm not sure if you've grown roselle before, when does it start to flower? Because I'm hoping that I'll get harvest for tea from that. Over here is another Dr. Weish's tomato plant. This one I started from a tomato sucker, just like those ones in jars on the deck that we saw. This pot's a little undersized for it, but I figured it was better to give it a shot than to not grow it at all. So as you can see, it's turned into a full-size tomato plant. It's getting blooms now. So we should hopefully get some tomatoes soon. But that started just as a tomato sucker. So thank you for hanging out with me and taking a little tour of my garden. Thank you for sticking with me through the good parts and the less good parts of the garden. We've kind of reached that time in the season when there'll be lots of great harvests, but also lots of disease and struggles. So, you know, we kind of just keep going and do the best we can. So I hope that your gardens are doing amazing. I hope that you are getting a great harvest and I hope you're having a wonderful summer. All right, I'll see you next time. And until then, I hope you have a great day. Bye, see you later.